way to do friends. Hi, it's your teacher friends, Lydia. And Heather. And we're here today with an engineering design challenge that you can use with your students. And most of what we're showing you today is going to be the demonstrations that you can use in your classroom to help your students understand the concepts behind this engineering activity. So these are the materials that you're going to need for today. Now the objective of the whole challenge is for students to make their own boat, to float some cans of food. But before they do that, it's best that you do these demonstrations so that students have a better understanding of what materials to choose and what shapes to put their boats in. And it's, these demonstrations are important because they show exactly that. The property that we are showing through this demonstration is the property of density. So the materials that students choose could be ones that are possibly less dense. Here we've got a ping pong ball and a golf ball. One has got more mass, one has got less mass. Can you guess which one might float and which one might sink, Heather? Oh, I'm thinking ping pong's gonna float. Looks like you spent some quality time in your bath. Yep, to have. So how about this sponge, Heather? What, what do you think is gonna happen to it when I place it on the surface mm. of the water? It's, it's, it's as light as well, this ping pong ball. Let's go for float then. Let's go for float, okay. So the sponge is light because it's full of air bubbles. But let's see what happens as the water takes in this, uh, fills out the air spaces that, was, that were inside the sponge. So as the water goes into the sponge, its mass increases. That increases its density. <gasps> right. So what we've done is to show what how density affects whether something floats or sinks. So that is certainly one consideration when choosing mm -hmm. materials. Yes, that will be helpful. Now, you know boats are not made of ping pong balls. Or sponges. They should, but they're not. <laughs> in fact, container ships are as big as hotels that float in water. It's the same with cruise ships. I have ships. seen a boat made from milk bottles. That's right. That's very cool. So steel is chosen as a material to build ships because steel is strong and steel is rigid, it holds its shape, but it's not less dense than water. It is, it, it would behave exactly like this blue tack. It would sink. So how do we make something as dense as blue tack, as dense as steel, float on water? This is where we consider forces acting on it. Now when this blue tack ball sinks to the bottom, it's because it's got weight press pulling it down and it's got buoyancy holding it up. Both forces are acting opposite to each other but the reason why it sinks is because weight, the weight pushing it down is a lot greater than the um, buoyancy force pushing it up. So can we change the shape of this mm. to change the forces acting on it? We want the force acting upwards to be greater. Let's do it. Can you please change the shape? I would love to. Do the magic of filming. There you go. Thank you. So with that same amount of Oh. With the same amount of blue tack, you've changed the shape yes. into a boat. So let's see whether that would make this boat float. And it does. So, having done these two demonstrations to explain density, as well as how shape affects the forces acting on an object, students then proceed to make their own boats from recycled material. Okay, let's we have one that's pre-made. Yes. Wonderful, well. This is the Yes I Can Challenge, where students test their boats with canned foods and see how many chickpea. canned foods it chickpeas can support. For this chickpeas, one. chickpeas. Can I? Oh. Okay, go I ahead. Go ahead. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so what you've done now, with, by increasing the weight, by, by adding the, the tin food into this boat, the weight has increased, but there was enough buoyancy to support it. Baked beans. Baked beans. Oh, yes. Okay. Go on. Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, okay. I'm having trouble with the balance here. Yep. Hang so on. now we've got forces oh! on either side. And <laughs> it's next. a sinker. Okay. That's okay. I'll clean up and you get ready for the next boat. Let's try the next one. Do we get the Titanic theme song going on here? <laughs> no, your sponge looks like an iceberg. Okay, here we go. We might have to put the two cans in tuna? simultaneously. Yep, let's go with tuna. So balance is going to be an issue, isn't it? Let's have a look. Maybe like that. Let's not back. I don't know. 
quick one. corn. Quick, 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 quick. There we go. Three cans. And the winner is, how many cans did we have on that? That one had, it only stayed up with two. Okay, so I think, oh uh, no, I think this one's gonna go. So the winner <laughs> is this <laughs> pontoon. So I hope you and your students have fun learning about properties and how forces act on different shapes as you make boats float. Mm -hmm.